Have you ever played Jenga? Uh, Jenga is a tower made of blocks, and each player uh, removes a block, hoping the tower doesn't fall over on their turn. Uh, there's a, a number of word pictures that the Bible uses uh, to describe the church. Uh, Paul in Ephesians uses three of them. Uh, we are the building of Christ. Uh, he uses the word temple. Um, we are the body of Christ, where each of us represent a part. And we are the bride of Christ, which describes the incredible intimacy we enjoy with Jesus. All three of these images speak to how interdependent we are in this thing called the church. And when you start removing the bricks uh, in a building, uh, when a body part ceases to fulfill its respective function, uh, when a spouse stops living in authentic relationship, well, the whole thing becomes unstable. We've come to the close of our series called Ownership, and it's been our goal uh, to help you understand how vitally important it is for the life of the church and for your own spiritual growth uh, to embrace the values that fulfill the mission of Grace Fellowship, to help people, uh, Grace Fellowship exists to help people connect more fully to God, His church, and His world. And connection is, is what it's all about. A committed brick in, in a building, a, a faithful part in a body, a devoted spouse in a marriage. Uh, and we live that, we do that by living out the values. Uh, and we've talked about them over the last five weeks. Growing people change. I can't do life alone. Uh, saved people serve people. I cannot outgive God. Found people find people. Now, the question is, why, why would we do that? Why is the church so important? Well, let me share with you two reasons. Here's the first one. Uh, Jesus died for the church. When you consider the cross, uh, you begin to understand how much Jesus loves you. Uh, Deuteronomy 7.7 7 says that God has set his love on us. Uh, he chose uh, to love you. If, if you could just sit in the love of God for a moment and realize how much he loves you, uh, Jesus lived the life you could not live and died the death you should have died. Uh, now, it, it's one thing to, to be overwhelmed that he loves you, but the Bible doesn't stop there. Uh, Jesus loves us, uh, you and me together in the church. Uh, like a parent with multiple children, uh, he, he loves all of us together, and he loves it when we love each other. Uh, here's the deal, friends. Uh, Christianity is not a, a one-man band. It's not an individual sport. It's not a lone ranger life. Um, I do not hesitate to assert to you that if you are not uh, committed and faithful and devoted to the church, uh, you're not living out your fundamental calling as a Christian. Uh, you're a block in the building, and when you remove your block from the tower, it, it affects the whole tower. Uh, bottom line, Jesus doesn't make church optional. He died for it. Well, here's the second thing I want to say. I've never met a growing Christian who is detached from the church. I never have. I've met some angry Christians. I've met some discouraged Christians, some weak Christians. But I've never met a growing one. Uh, you, you cannot do this on your own. Now, here's the deal. A, a, a lot of you have seen the dark side of the church. I know I have. And a lot of people walk away from the church because they think uh, church should be easier I mean, it shouldn't be this hard to live uh, together, to do life together in the family of God. But I, I want you to think about something. Uh, and Paul talks about this in Ephesians. How Gentile Christians and Jewish Christians didn't always get along. Uh, it's, it's been going on for 2,000 years. Uh, two people who love Jesus don't necessarily love each other. Uh, a theologian by the name of Don Carson says that the church is made up of natural enemies. Uh, we're all different, and what binds us together is not common education, race, in income, politics, nationality, accents, or jobs. Uh, two people who would never get together on their own have nothing in common, share no personal interests or opinions, but all of a sudden they find themselves connected to each other in the same building, attached to the same body, joined together in the same marriage. God set His love on each of them. That's the thing. It's, it's not about them. 
it's about God. It's about the overwhelming grace of God to think that he would love either one of us. It's not about you. It's, it's, it's not about me. There's, there's no reason to feel superior or arrogant or entitled. Uh, the fact that Jesus loves you doesn't make me marvel at you. It makes me marvel at Jesus. And if we could both marvel at Jesus together, well, yes, it will take work. Every family has to work at staying together. Every marriage takes work to keep it going. I don't care how much you love someone or how much they love you. Every relationship takes work. That's why there's over 50 one another's in the New Testament. Jesus knew this would be hard. Friends, the gospel is the deepest, the strongest, and the most eternal thing that will ever bind you and me together. What keeps all of us in the same building, in the same body, and in the same marriage is the fact that both of us, you and me, we're messed up people, uh, we're broken people before a holy God, yet rescued by a love we do not deserve or could not earn. And for that reason alone, the Church of Jesus Christ is the hope of the world. Well, I want to thank you for taking this journey with us. And my prayer is that everyone who calls Grace Fellowship home will not just enjoy the benefits, but embrace the ownership of what God is doing in this place. God bless you all.